，特别荣幸的邀请您参加这个《冰点中国》的拍摄。What made China, China? It's not easy. To understand China, you have to understand globalization. Over the past decades, China has been on this fast track of modernization. One of the impacts of early economic growth is erosion of traditional culture, development, and heritage. Do you think two can coexist? Old days, when the West is strong, people interpret modernization as Westernization. They regard the Chinese old tradition to present the backwardness, uncivilized. Only by modernization, you can see the value of your tradition. Twenty years ago, people were saying that the environmental cost of modernity, China will take decades, if not centuries, to repair. That has been proven wrong. And I want to avoid the negative side of modernization, to fully utilize the good side of modernization. To form city cluster is one of China's development strategies. All cities are based on a, a sort of a division label. It's in favor of the survival and the development of local cultures. When we talk about modernity, the rules and regulations oftentimes is a legacy of something that was created a long time ago. In the last 10 to 20 years, China's starting to evolve what China defines as modernization. In the 80s, many American intellectuals believe the Chinese system will be transformed into a Western type of system. But now, after the four decades reform opened up, why China is more Chinese, not more Western? About a hundred years ago, back in like the 1920s, the threat at that time, it was Hitler. Do you think climate change is like the Hitler or the demon of this decade? The rate of progress towards global well-being has been very slow. So when I tell them that I'm working on a nonprofit, I'm working in the rural communities, they would always look at me like, oh, you're not well off enough to be caring about that yet. Especially the younger generation right now, you know, they just think that there's nothing I can do about the world. The worst thing that can happen during the next 10 years is the lack of action. Do you still think the world is on track to face these global issues? <laughs> you say, still on track. We have never been on track. We get rising social tension. Different parts of the world could evolve into social collapse. What do you think about China's action? Like, for the next 10 years, what are some things that you think China must do? You're doubling the income of people every 10 years, you know, which is unheard of in the history of man. When global society tried to agree on a solution, you know, what is sustainable development, they ended up defining 160. Your government simplified those goals and just kept three. In my mind, China has done more than many other nations on the surface of the earth. Most people disagree very strongly with me and are just waiting for the time when China is going to collapse. All the decades of humiliation, all the years of the Cultural Revolution, of massive suffering, all those years, suddenly, in the late 1970s, gave rise to stability with flexibility. That, I think, is something that historians will have to explain. I cannot explain. The beginning of opening up and reform under Deng Xiaoping, where he launched China on a, a miracle process of change. Deng assumed this exercise, China's opening up and reform project, would go on for a long time. It was around 30 years in that President Xi took over. China started to realize that something was wrong with the world system. 2008, from where I'm standing, was our generation's 1929. Major crash that changed the world. The world no longer made sense in terms that people understood before 2008. President Xi seemed to have gained some inkling that he had to correct the course of his country. So my question would be, what is reform and opening up today? And how is it continuing to transform China? My foreign friends, there will 
will say, oh, I know Korean K-pop, I know Indian food, Thai beaches, Japanese anime. Show us what you have. I never felt the need, like I have to carry on the traditional Chinese cultural values until I studied abroad. Without this capability of invention of our own cultural identity, it's difficult to understand a contemporary China. In 2018, Bill Gates came to China and he said, this is a pretty incredible time to be a young person in China. What do you think he meant by that? Beijing. Only here can provide them a lot of the new resources and possibilities. What impact would you say all this built-in diversity has had on China? Each dynasty is established by different people and even different ethnicities. So why the Chinese culture still continues? This is a grand question. It's a great question. Big, big question. It's difficult to answer this question in a simple way. No one wants to take that risk and, and cut a deal with China anymore. China seems to have touched the cheese of someone else, the Americans or the Europeans. President Biden was received by the Her assessment I don't have any early nine days. I've done a fair amount of research on that. Trade war was an outgrowth of that, and it's you know very unfortunate. You know, quickly escalated into a tech war, and now we're in the early stages of a new Cold War. And I experience like a dream for a lot of Chinese people, but obviously. We have to wake up and face a new reality as well. China was the world's ultimate producer, but trade is not what it used to be. Right now, the atmosphere of this relationship has gone even worse, from bad to worse. This is true. We've lost a sense of trust in one another. And so where, who's going to fill the void in this next wave of globalization? <laughs> You know, 1949, China would be in three or four different countries and it would be dominated. The CPC is like the owl, quoting our friend who is politically correct. And in Western culture, the owl is perceived as a, a very intelligent and wise bird, quietly watches everything, and in fact, his head is capable of almost 360 degree turn. I'm not sure. Because you mentioned that it's always uh, flying the net. I, mean, I think it's not that the CPC did, right? We have 15% of the representatives are from the grassroots, you know, such as workers and farmers. China reminds me of the Guardian system in an ideal state that Plato imagined.